What's up everybody? Welcome back to the patio. This is what we're making today. That is some delicious rotisserie picanha. Marinated for five hours. It's gonna be delicious. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're cooking picanha. So for those of you who aren't aware, picanha is, uh, you know, a meat that's very popular in Brazil. Well, if you ever go to a Brazilian steakhouse and you see a folded meat and it's done on a rotisserie and they slice it off, um, you've had it before, it's delicious. Pick this up locally at a, at a butcher. And what we're gonna do is we're going to actually marinate this first. Grill mates just so happens to have a Brazilian steakhouse marinade, so uh, I haven't actually used it before. We're gonna try it out. First, let's get this guy open. We're gonna marinate it for probably three or four hours, and then we'll get the links ready. Now we're just gonna pat this guy dry. That way our marinade will be able to stick to it. Now the big thing with something like this, all meats really, you can find a grain in the meat. We'll see if this comes across camera, but you can see the grain is going left to right for me. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually cut this into slices left to right so that when you eat it, you're cutting it and then you're gonna cut it against the grain and that's the way you're gonna get a nice tender cut of meat. Now we're actually going to rotisserie this as well, so I think I'm just going to cut this in two. Now you can see some marbling in there, you can see how big the fat cap is. That's one of the uh, unique things about this cut of meat. It's very, very flavorful, very tender. And uh, what we're gonna do here is we're actually going to stick this in a bowl so we can marinate. I've already pre-mixed everything, but if you look on the back of these, you're gonna see, it says quarter cup of oil, quarter cup of water, a uh, tablespoon of red wine vinegar, and up to two pounds of meat. Now I've, I'm doing a double match, uh, batch because I just wanna make sure it's completely covered. So I've put everything in here. We're gonna dump in our seasonings. Give this a good mix up. And then we're gonna throw this right into a bowl and get this guy ready. This is gonna go in the fridge, like I said, for two to four hours. We'll see how long. But we wanna make sure that we get a good generous coating of this on there and we're going to take this a little step further i want to make sure some of this gets into the meat so i'm going to take a fork put some holes in here so it can penetrate in now i hear <laughs> someone watching right now is crying because i'm poking the holes in the meat right when i was young you would always say, you know, flip your steak once, don't put holes in your meat, all the juices are gonna ex escape. That's long since been proved to be false. If you buy meat from Costco or some of the big, uh, big box stores out there, like you're gonna find out real quick that, just read the label, it says right there, mechanic mechanically tenderized. They're poking a whole bunch of holes in your meat before you buy it. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I don't buy Costco meat anymore unless I'm buying a big cryovac cryo one um, because then they haven't touched it yet. I should have brought out a spoon here, but we just want to get some marinade on there. I'll spoon it and flip it. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in there for a few hours and just flip it every hour so each side's getting some 
Um, but yeah, you know, the longer you marinate this, the better it's going to taste. We'll get it in the fridge and we'll come back out and show you what it looks like in a little bit. So it's been uh, just, a, just around five hours. Uh, not gonna lie, I was downstairs playing on YouTube and uh, had another rum and coke. Cheers. But the great thing is, is that this can marinate for a long time. I mean, you could do this overnight. Uh, not gonna hurt it, just gonna put that much more flavor into it. Let's get the link set up. As you can see, I've got a shelf here. That goes up and out of the way for rotisserie. Uh, one of the great things about this is that you know the links plugs in so it's got lights which we're going to use and um you know i use them at night all the time and then you know it's got electronic ignition but this also plugs into the back of it as well so it's just got a little plug you put it on and they're good to go no running a different power plug and then the other unique thing about the links is that we have two positions here we got one for smaller meat that's close to the element and then one that's a little further away depending on what you're cooking and then of course you've got a couple different speeds so what we're going to do is we're going to light up the rear burner here and it's got a coupler there so we just want to keep the coupler warm or get it warm and then it'll stay going tough to see in the light but it's still going i'm also going to start one of these burners over here and I'm going to put it around medium. I'm not sure what we're going to end up with. Ideally, we want the back burner here to do most of the cooking, right? We're just trying to add some heat around here. We're going to try and slow cook it. If it gets too much of a crust on here and starts to get burnt, we'll turn off the rear burner. Keep, let it still roll in rotisserie, and then we'll use the grill like an oven to finish it off. So we're going to let that get up to temperature. Here's the star of the show. The great thing about being an oil-based marinade is once it was in the fridge for a little bit, I spooned everything on top of it and it just stuck there. Oil thickened up, it didn't move. So we're in good shape there. Now what we're gonna do is get this on the spit. So the goal here is to really just fold that in like that. Let, let the spit go through it and hold it together. So one of the drawbacks about such a big barbecue, <laughs> you got a big spit. So we're gonna go through like so. Hoping this is gonna poke through. It did. And then you're gonna try and go through the middle We gotta go all the way down to this side here. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this guy. And I almost need longer arms. Just let me double check where we're at with that guy. Right for the middle. Probably could have brought out a knife just to make it a little easier to get a hole started, but we're good. I'm gonna let those sit for a little bit while the barbecue gets heated up. And I think I brought the tines out, but I don't think we're actually gonna need them. I think it's gonna sit like it is warm this up a little bit and you know for the most part i'm going to cook this pretty slow uh, i'm going to try and probably keep it around 300 um, 
we'll see we'll see uh, how quick it cooks on the on the uh, with the rotisserie burner there. Almost at about 250. We're gonna get it on there. Obviously, in front of the main burner there, rotisserie burner, it's gonna be a little hotter. One thing I'm gonna do is just pat off some of the oil and stuff like that, so we don't want to steam the meat. We want to uh, get it nice and crispy on the outside, so. Still got lots of marinade on, on the inside, and quite frankly, since it's been in there for over five hours, it's, uh, it's got tons of flavor anyhow. That guy the way. Maybe just a little bit more. The big question is, is this gonna keep spinning? <laughs> There's only one way to find out. It looks like it. Let's get her on. This has actually got three speeds, so I'm just gonna do it on low. We're at the closest spot. Just got a little set of wheels down here. So, we'll let her go. We'll just keep checking on it, do it by temperature and see what happens. We're about 35 minutes in. It's time to have a look. As you can see, we're just a tick over 300. Should be in good shape. Mm. Smells good, looks even better. Let's keep her going, we'll check her on her in another 15 minutes or so. One thing we should do is we should make sure we do a temperature check here. 121, 118. The one thing about cooking it this way is you're gonna have some in the center that's not quite there. It's 144 on the very outside, so we got a little bit of time to go. I'm just gonna turn that up on high so we can get rather than getting the outside so much, we'll turn it on high and that way we'll just keep the juices flowing through the meat and let the barbecue do the rest of the work. And we'll check on it probably 10, 15 minutes. I mean we're close. It's been Eight or nine minutes, she's looking good. I'm thinking it's probably done. I just wanna double check. Turn that off. Yeah. So we're gonna let this rest. I think I will, uh, I'm gonna take it off the spit real quick. You know what, I'm gonna leave it on there for a little bit. I just wanna get it covered up. We'll let the spit cool down a little bit. Now what I'm doing is I'm just, I don't want it touching the board, the board getting wet or hot and drawing out some of the juices. I don't know the science behind it, but I was always told if you let it rest on a plate or on a board or whatever, the board warms up and it pulls up more of the juices. Juices are gonna come out no matter what. This is a, a juicy piece of meat, um, but we wanna let that sip for uh, you know a good, good 10 or 15 minutes before we cut into it. And that way the meat will relax, the juices will go back through the meat and we'll see what we got. So this had a chance to cool down a little bit. I'm just gonna pull out the spit. 
not quite tasting time, but it's darn close. So let's see here. Whew. She's hot. We'll uh, not burn ourselves here. just for another minute or two. I want to give lots of time for the juices to get back in there. It's close, uh, but we got, I don't know, maybe another five minutes before it's eating time. It's been a good 10, 15 minutes, maybe 12 minutes. I can't wait any longer. It came out here on the patio. It smells delicious. I took it off the spit. We're gonna grab this piece right here, cut in the middle of it. See some good juices coming out of there. I mean, that's, that's delicious. Looks great. The smell of this is, is just phenomenal. We're just gonna take a little piece off. We're cutting against the grain. We talked about that in the beginning. Oof. Super tender. I mean, come on, even the flies are coming for it. Oh. That's some good eating. Good color. You can see outside we're a little bit dark, inside we're good. Um, honestly, I think next time I'll keep the uh, rotisserie going just a little faster that way it's not getting the outsides as much. But uh, other than that, I mean, whew, uh, I mean, yeah, we need another little piece. Luckily for me, <laughs> it's dinner time. I'm gonna eat this right now. Mm. Oh, that's some good stuff. Highly recommend it. That seasoning, the Grill Mates Brazilian Steak Spice. Good seasoning, great flavor. Love it, can't go wrong with it. If you like this video, please thumbs up, like it, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.